Jason. Here. Brandon. Here. Jeff. Here. Jennifer. Here. <laughs> Gabe. Here. Um, <clears throat> I'm here. Uh, Larry. Yeah. Dave Brosky. Here. Sarah. Yep, I'm here. All right. Uh, Lori's excused. And so is uh, Dave. Dave Francis. Go. <clears throat> Our agenda. I think we added the. I don't think they got today. Yeah, they should see. Anybody else have any items they want to add? Well, the only thing I have to add is somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what you what want to add? A dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to open that can of worms until you're ready. So. Okay. It's under, we'll put it on your new business. So. That's a good place for it. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Just what you say. Yeah, what do you want to call it? We need to call it something. Uh -huh. You got to call it somebody. Uh, 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 I, can't, I can't even tell you. Um, possible seat vacancy? Okay. This is a long story. I have, I have maybe have a solution for it. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, uh, nothing else. Any public comment on the agenda items you see there? I will have another public comment at the end of the meeting also. But any items um, you see on there you want to talk about? All right, well then. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Make that motion. Approve the agenda. Second that motion. Motion by Gabe, second by Brandon to approve our agenda as printed with the addition. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, under communications, um, I have a resolution there in front of you um, I'd like to read. It's going to be the Village of Ugly Resolution 1 2019. Resolution honoring the memory of Lola M. Brown. Whereas Lola M. Brown, who served the Village of Ugly with distinction as a council member, passed away on December 7, 2018, and whereas Lola M. Brown, who enriched the Village of Ugly with her service, to the Bingham Township Ambulance Service as an EMT for 25 years, and whereas Lola M. Brown, who demonstrated the spirit of public service to several community organizations in the village of Ubley, such as the Lions Club, the Community Club, the Historical Society, and the Thumb Veterans Organization, and whereas Lola M. Brown organized the first Ubley Joint Vacation Bible School between St. John's Catholic Church, Ubley United Methodist Church, and the Presbyterian Church of Ubley for approximately 40 years. Now therefore be it resolved that the Ubley Village Council hereby honor the memory of Lola M. Brown for a life outstanding service and extraordinary contributions to the Village of Ubley and be it further resolved that this resolution be recorded in the minutes of the Village of Ubley as a permanent record of the achievement, achievements of and respect for one of Ubley's finest citizens, and the original be presented to the family of Lola M. Brown with sincere sympathy and appreciation. Adopted this day of January 3rd, 2019. So that being said, um, some of you didn't have a chance to serve with her, I did. Um, you were on there. Yeah. She did the parks are important to her. That was one thing she worked she chaired that, um, and she was a good, she was definitely, she had the village at heart and everything she did. So, with that, I'll entertain a motion that we accept this resolution. I would make a motion to accept the resolution. I'll second it. Lola Brown. Resolution, motion made by Brandon, seconded by Jeff. Any <coughs> discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, 
just an update from the DNR grant. We were awarded the grant, so we were awarded 150,000. We have to match some of that also. But we don't have a project agreement yet, so we're not going to do nothing else with it tonight. Um, that was just letting us know that it could take 30 to what was it, 30 to 90 days at least before we even get that. So, and that is all I have in communications. <coughs> um, the December minutes are in front of you. And just in there, um, it was pointed out on the back page under budget and finance. It should be Jennifer Roscoe, not uh, Jennifer Rubin. I don't know if anybody else has seen any other. I didn't think polygamy was legal. I was say we're not in Utah, are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of right. Sometimes it has better benefits, so. <laughs> hmm. All right. Set to reason for the issue. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I'll entertain a motion to approve our December 5th, 2018 meeting minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the December 5th, 2018 meeting minutes. I second the motion. Motion by Katie, second by Jennifer to uh, approve December 5th meeting minutes. <coughs> Any discussion? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, also, the bills are in front of you. Um, there was we had an issue with our wind, uh, with our computers uh, with the QuickBooks, and so we did do some. Windows updating and support, and so that was seven hundred dollars. Um, I wasn't at the hall at the time; I was at the library, so I had to put it on my credit card in order to get that started. And then um, yeah. under the uh, um, oh, underwater, we've gotten thirty-one meters now back. So it's, just, it's starting to, they're starting to come in finally. Anyway, that's our cost, you know, for the 31 at this time. We're still waiting on 18. And I'm going to go from there. All right. I'll entertain a motion to. Pay the December 2018 bill due in January. Now second a motion to pay the December. Oh, you got me here. Oh, you got me. Oh, there I need a motion. <laughs> you got her. I'll second it. <clears throat> okay, motion by Jennifer, second by Sarah to approve mm -hmm. our tw December 2018 bills due in January. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And then the last thing that I have is um, every year we do a performance resolution um, for governmental agencies, and what it does is it gives certain people the rights to contact um, MDOT if we need to close down a road for a parade or, you know anything of that nature, or if there was work that was, you know, being done and stuff like that. So anyway, I put on there that um, Dave Franzel, Jason Nickel, myself, and Dave Rothy, um have the, you know, the authorization, you know, to do that. And, um, but I need the board to approve the resolution so I can send it into the state. Then. 
So I entertain a motion that to approve our performance resolution for governmental agencies. I will make a motion to approve the performance review for governmental agencies. And I'll second the motion to I can't get it all out. To approve the performance resolution for governmental agencies. Wow. So not, yeah. Motion by Brandon, second by Jennifer to approve a resolution for the governmental agencies. Any discussion? Is that something we get to see? What's that? Is that something we get to see? Yeah, she's got a copy. Oh, you got a copy? <coughs> all right. That's so all. So like when he, when yeah. he has a parade or something, we got to do this. Yeah, we have to notify the state, I think, yeah. 30 days in advance. Oh, <coughs> $68,444.51. Water fund, $353,030.19. Major street account, major street fund, $291,576.66. Local street fund, $202,193.98. Village street fund, $388,632. 71 cents. Library, 100,427.56 cents. Downtown Development Fund, $12,020.05. And uh, just to let you know that uh, we're going to be looking into all these checking accounts we have for every one of these accounts. Uh, I believe we can combine a few and get a little better interest rates on them. Uh, some of them are as low as a tenth of a percent. Some of them are as high as 1.8 percent. Uh, if we put some of these in the cash sweeps, which we do have some in there, uh, those are insured up to seven million dollars, I'm told, from the bank. So in the next couple of months, uh, I'll make sure there's no regulations about deleting some checking accounts and combining some funds for to take advantage of those interest rates. That'll be in a couple months. That's it. Okay. Any other questions for him? Okay, thanks, Larry. <clears throat> All right, I'll go on to the zoning report. Um, for the 2018 year, I did 18 of them. Um, two were sheds, a lot of fences, some fences for pools. Uh, that's pretty much it. And we did one for Tom Zellick for his. Um, project on the corner down there to turn that into a restaurant and stuff so other than that that's pretty not a whole lot goes on there <laughs> oh parks and public spaces I already touched on the uh, grant and that's about it so, yeah. I don't a whole lot of reading through. yeah it's a little thick manual to, yeah. to read through all right, uh, item nine, intergovernmental issues, police report. Nothing on the intergovernmental issues part, but uh, this is going to be the second reading of the prohibition of marijuana establishments. Uh, it is posted, so uh, read it at your will, and there you go. I'll barbell 
pulls that. Yep. And just kind of She's got a copy. Yep. yep. Um, but I think we do have to have it adopted by council. You know, oh, yeah, because of the second reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to adopt. Can I see that? Yeah. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adopt into our ordinance uh, under Chapter 4, Prohibition of Marijuana Establishments. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Yeah. Hey, Jason. Hold on a second. Jason, you have to have a public hearing on that. You have to have two public readings, and then it's got to be a public hearing. And because you got to let the public come in. Because, oh, because that's, it, yeah. She's going to put it in the newspaper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And because, so, because it's an ordinance that's going to be passed, um, it has to have a public hearing. So what you need to do after the second reading is schedule a public hearing you know, five minutes before next month's meeting. Yeah. And, okay. And just allow the public to speak on it if they choose. And then after the public hearing, then during the meeting, you guys can uh, vote on the document. So, two readings of public hearing. Right. It's a seventh, right? Public meeting, seventh. We'll do seven fifteen then for that. <coughs> Police report? Yeah or no? no uh, just, uh, <coughs> Jeff and I have been looking at uh, looking at our RMS, our report management system, because our, our central dispatch in the county went to a program called Clemis. And if you're not with Clemis, everything is different for you, I guess the best way to put it. <coughs> so, um, we're going to go down and meet. Uh, uh, Clemens is run by uh, Oakland County Sheriff Department. They're the ones that initiated this thing. So we're going to go down there and meet with them and look at it and see if it's feasible. They charge you by full time equivalents for our department. So we'd have one being Matt, and then all the part timers that work, if they add up 2,080 hours, that'd be two full time equivalents. And I think we're, I think we operate right around three full time equivalents somewhere in that area. So to get a cost, and the cost would be cheaper than what we got now, but I think the biggest cost is going to be transferring all our information from our old system to the new system. So if we get a FOIA request, you know, and they need a report, we got to go back and look it up. You know, we need all that transferred, and I kind of think that's going to be the, the pricey one of it. But we're going to try to we're going to try to get some numbers by budget time and, and go through it and see if it's feasible. As of now, um, we started taking our own numbers. We keep track of them. We've got we've got a complaint book. We always got our numbers generated from from dispatch. So if dispatch would send us to a, a, an accident town or in Bingham Township, they, they'd assign a complaint number for us. Now we have a book and we keep track of our own complaint numbers because they also assign, Clemens also assigns a number every time you check out a car for a traffic stop or for follow up, you know, and all those things where you don't need. So what, what you can actually end up doing is actually inflating the complaint numbers where next year it could actually show, you know, we handle, we handle about 600, 700 complaints a year. But if they give us a plate number every time we check out for a follow up and every time we check out on a traffic stop, you know, we could show 2,000 plates next year. And you'll be like, holy smokes, you guys are really busy. Well, not actually, it's just the way they sign plate numbers. So to keep the numbers true, we're taking our own numbers for complaints. That's just a you know, little thing that uh, little thing we've been dealing with and that we're going to start you know, looking into. Um, I mean, other than that, yeah. a couple of FOIA requests that I got with Barb on uh, sending to so. Okay. Thank you. Well, budget finance. I know Dave's <coughs> got us some uh, numbers or what? Oh. what? You missed one. What did I do? Brandon. Oh, I skipped Brandon. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna under, talk English. I underlined the wrong one. <laughs> Short and sweet. Um, guys, just busy. They finished up uh, leaves, plowing some snow, fixed uh, salt truck. Um, just putting four new tires on it. Um, we received 31 more top registers that came in. Put those on, but then we had, or we're still waiting on 18. 
but then there's another 15 that went down, so we're back to 32. Um, we cut down the box elder tree outside here. Um, my elder is supposed to kind of stuff down in January. Fix the drainage problem in front of Brad Kabotsky's house on Washington Street. Kind of backing up. Um, started taking out some Christmas lights and then um, the, oh, the preschool. They had a water line break going in, so we fixed that, set the bill for it. And then uh, we changed some locks on the DPW garage and shed and changed the codes for the office. He's gaining on the water meters. He's trying. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's putting a good effort into it. I know that. I'm fighting a losing battle. <laughs> no. <coughs> All right. No questions? Okay, now we do the budget stuff. Yeah. Oh, skipper. Skipper. Yeah, uh, Dave got us some. Franzel got us some info on, he's, he's looking at a different piece of equipment for plowing the sidewalks. The ones we got are old and uh, breaking down on them. I broke down on him today, actually. But uh, So that's one thing we're looking at. Um, it like, sounds like you guys got some things on your police budget. So we'll put some stuff together on the February meeting, and that'll be, uh, that meeting's pretty much going to be a lot about the budget. So. The water towers and that too as well. Yeah, and we'll know, and that's being bid uh, January sixteenth. So we we'll that, that number. You know, yep. So we'll we'll have a hard number, and we can decide if it's out of the range what they told us it would be. We can reject it, but I they're pretty confident that their number they told us it's going to be in that range. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to keep it maintained too. So. <laughs> All right, uh, item 12, uh, we're back to the shed that's built on village property again. I think, are you, you Gary? I'm Jason. Uh, you want to tell your side of the story? I mean, <laughs> sure. I, uh, I was unable, I've been speaking with Jason on the matter, and I was unable to attend the first meeting where you guys addressed it. My wife and I were out of town. Um, my son and I are on the title of the house. I purchased it. It's foreclosed. And... Uh, there was a great deal of interest in people buying it, but it was owner-occupant, so my son actually has to live there. It couldn't be an investment. So he, my son is living there, but people were interested in the shed. Um, so I called zoning here or in Huron County and asked about partitioning that off and selling the shed to put it towards his mortgage, lowers payment sort of thing. And then this problem arises here where it's built on Village property, correct? Yeah. And and uh, so Jason and I were trying to come up with some kind of resolution, and uh, I know you guys have Mr. Ferris as your attorney, and I called Mike Sanborn where I bought it from the real estate agent in Bay City, and told him, okay, I got a key for the shed, and it's partially, but now it seems to be all on village property, and we have an issue. And he said, well, I contacted. The village or the zoning in Heron County and was told that the fence line is the property line and I said okay well I don't know where the problem started but I put money down and paid for it and what I guess it comes down to is he's contending that he was told that was a property line I don't know if it's I think it's his job to find that out but also that a permit was issued by the village in 1993 or 98 to build the shed, it was approved, finalized, and filed with Jeff Smith. Because I, I went to uh, Aaron County uh, building and zoning, and he he discussed it with me prior to your first meeting, and said that s just before the county took over doing the permits for you guys for the village, that that had been done in the village and filed with them, and he pulled it. And I guess it, I, it's recorded and whatnot. So I guess that's where I'm at with it. Um, I don't know where we're going to go from here, but Mr. Ferris, your guys' attorney, said the attorney that the real estate hired for me, I didn't hire an attorney, but he did because 
probably wants to resolve this. Uh, he sent a cease and desist for us not to go in the building and trespass and so on and so forth. But I have been, and my boat's in there. So until we get to resolve, I'm going to continue to trespass on my property or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to come here and see. I don't know that much about the legal jargon, but I, I'd really like to move on with this so my son can get his mortgage finalized. I bought the house because it had to be paid for cash, and he wants to refinance it in his name, and I want to get my money back. But because of what's going on with the shed, I can't. So there's a little urgency on my part, but generally stuff like this doesn't happen fast, I know. So I just was wondering what everybody else's take on it was. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I've only discussed the law, you know, right. and, and what your property right. description says is what is surveyed. And right. I mean, we paid for the survey. Yeah, I saw, I saw Yeah, it. so from, you know, from our standpoint, we're supposed to follow the law. Right. You know, if, if we just give that to you, well, then, you know, we can't do that. Oh, no. So I, either we got to either come up with an agreement to buy it from you or you buy more lot from us. Right. right. Now, if you buy more lot from us, you have to make that one parcel. We can't, like mm -hmm. our zoning, like you run it, you're in the township. And the township told you that you couldn't do it because it wasn't an acre. Then she discovered that you didn't own it. Right. So like our village zoning doesn't allow for a shed to be in a residential area without a house on it. Right. Well, so according to Jeff Smith, who is the, I guess, the director of the zoning of it. For the township he is. Right. Not for the village. Well, he, well, well and, and I'm, again, I'm quoting him, not, probably not word for word, but he said that there's going to have to be if some kind of resolution, but a variance would have to be allowed, even if because it's two different tax bases and it's been charged as one and even if let's say I bought the property off you guys or whatnot I don't even have access to it because the road is a village property so the driveway that Carl Hack was using to drive in there is village so there had to be a easement granted and a variance and so on and so forth and he said that because there was a permit and it was allowed that <laughs> this was his words that it doesn't fall on my plate so i don't know whose plate it falls on but i know my yeah i i know there's a building permit because i i have that right but they you know we did the village didn't issue nothing i mean i looked and i don't see nothing it's in the township because that property was in the township i see i, see. And I don't i don't know what happened there uh, part of me tells me somebody just measured wrong because when you measure in the village you measure from the right away when when you build something mm -hmm. and out there you're you're in a township so you're supposed to center measure from the center of the road so if you wheel that that's the <coughs> set it's off right but it, but even if they i thought if, if they measured from the center of the road or from the edge and gave us that extra it still wouldn't cover all the wood. The shed is well beyond that. The shed's yeah, 30 feet from the property line. The right of way is a, the right of way is big on them 19. 20. I thought they said 20. Oh no, it's 100. And, oh. Yeah, okay. it's like 60 okay. feet from center. So. But from what I'm seeing is that the stakes are like between my son's house and the shed. There's still 30 feet till you hit the shed. And the shed is 30 feet wide, and then it's another three feet beyond that. Yeah. And and then actually, like he also said that. Jeff Smith said that the fence has to be moved five feet from the building. It can't be like it's two feet or three feet. And maybe oh, that's yeah, not, he's talking about a, the building setbacks from the edge, you know, like the fence the that's there now. That yeah, was, if you use that, it'd be, right. it'd be close, yeah. Right. Well, this is what he said. And again, I'm just repeating, I, I don't really know. I, I, I bought and sold houses before. This is not why I purchased this house. I purchased it for my son, and part of the reason, most of the houses I buy to flip are in the twenty or thirty thousand dollar range. Well, we made sixty two for this one. Part of it because it has a great big shed, not on our property behind it. But <laughs> but that's not the way it was sold to us, and it wasn't on your guys. And uh, I don't know, but the permit you're saying was pulled by the township. Okay. Yeah, because they so, are in the township. So I don't I don't know. How, I, how it's best to be resolved, but 
you know, I would like, I, I did not hire an attorney. Michael Sanborn hired him for me. Mm -hmm. He's supposedly representing me, and I'm not paid. I talked to Dallas Rooney for 45 minutes, and then I got a bill on the man for 150 bucks because it's $200 an hour. I don't prefer to hire a lawyer to straighten this out because most of my money's in that house right now. So, yeah. you know, and, and if, if there's a, I mean, we had kicked around the idea if you guys had some use for it, maybe that would be a great resolution, but I, I can't. I can't give the shed away as well as you guys can't give the property away, because I would have never paid sixty-two thousand. I mean, we like the house. We remodeled it already on the inside before we even knew this was going to be going on. But I mean, my son not having the shed is okay with me. He loves it. He just finished school and he graduated in Ugly, and he's working at Dow. I think he's going to be a, you know, I think he's going to be there for a long time. But. If we don't have a shed, that's okay. I just don't want to not have a shed for nothing. Just to clarify for my own understanding, on it, so the township issued the permit, not the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so, the so therefore the permit is invalid anyway, so because it's the village property village property that needs, and the village needs to issue the permit. So therefore the okay, so the permit isn't even valid to begin with. No, <coughs> that property is in the township. That house, but it was yes. the, house, the, houses, the houses, but not the ships yeah. on our property. Right. I was talking about yes. the village property. Yeah. yeah. So you can't, the township can't come in and issue a permit for my house. I have to get that from the village. Same thing with any other property that would be village property. Okay. I was just making sure. I mean, I, so I guess, I mean, what do you feel your best resolution is? I mean, I know what the lawyers told me to do, and you, you wouldn't. Oh, that, this, <laughs> if, and you, it's like, apparently, what they told you to do is to just take the property, which, if the property is not. Yeah, hey, I'm not that kind of person. No, but no, but you, you know, can take I don't the, the property, that. but the shed still, you still have to compensate them for the shed if you take the property, and that's fine. But we have to come up with a reasonable. Yeah, amount. I mean, we own. We're, we're essentially we're not taking the property because we technically own it. We're, we yeah, the property. Shed. Yes, I, I understand. So that. there's that's my discussions with him a little bit. Is there's kind of three outs to this? Either you move the shed, right, or you buy the lot, or we buy the shed. Did right. we have the shed appraised at all? No, we haven't gone that route. No. And why quit spending money on it, you know what I mean? But, right. Well, I'm just curious. I didn't know if they did that when they Yeah. Did. And the village law. I mean, the law, the law, he, he, I don't know if I have a copy of it, but the law says that you cannot do that again. And it wasn't his fault. No, he's got, he's the one that's stuck in the middle. Yeah. It's the guy that sold him the property that's, well, should have known what he was selling and didn't. But even if he buys the lot. He's still not in compliance because he can't have the shed on there yeah. with the village property. No, so. that that would be a, that would have to be a condition of it. If we sell you that lot, mm -hmm. it has to become either a you're all in the township now, and that's one parcel number, mm -hmm. and then you can go to them and ask them again, and they know sure. what they'll tell you. And I, I to be honest with you, if if we sell it to you and you annex all into the village. As one parcel number, you would have to come ask the zoning board of appeals to right. say, "Hey, I want to do that." Well, that's this group again, and I right. that's probably not going to fly either. Right. But. As far as the adverse possession goes, the attorney that's um, representing yep. me, he said he contacted your attorney and said it's been I don't know if it's 93 or 98. I'm sorry, I don't know the date, but it's been over 20 years that it's been. The lawn, ninety five. Yeah. Okay, so it's whatever, and uh, so we can claim adverse possession, and it's already ours. But Mr. Ferris dug up something that says you can't do that with government property. Now they're debating that if it's possible, and it would have to go to court, and the judge would have to decide if it's possible because yep. it's seven years for adverse possession, and it's been twenty something years yep. that that it's gone on. So, and and I don't. Here to have a drug out thing here is and you're asking me what my solution you know I, I'm a peaceful resolution or a quick resolution would be good for me if it's possible but you know I, I if you guys don't have a use for the shed and as far as being appraised 
I, I do heating and cooling work builders all the time. Steve Messing, the, the shed's 30 by 50, it's stick built, it's not a um, tin shed with a, it has an actual structure and shingle roof. And he said to build it would be 60,000. But that's not the appraisal price. But that was that. That wouldn't be the appraisal price on it though? No, no, it wouldn't. And, and, and the, exactly, so to have it appraised, for what the building would be worth mm -hmm. without property, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, and it obviously wouldn't be sixty, but it wouldn't be six hundred either, you know. So, if if there's an interest by the village in this shed, you know, we could have it appraised and move on from there. I, I don't have no intention of moving it. Well, where would I put it, you know? And as far as the real estate agent, yeah, he, I, I think it's his responsibility to. When you sell me a house and give me a key for a shed to make sure that I yeah. bought the shed. So, yeah. but even if I go after him, which I probably will, that's still not going to resolve where we're at, right? As far as the shed goes. I'm surprised it got that far all the way through foreclosure to get it. It was sold, sold to me by the U.S. government. That's the beauty of it. Before somebody <laughs> finally, before I mean, that it got all the Well, the U.S. Way. government can't even stay open. <laughs> you think somebody would have caught that? Trump wanted like to get foreclosure. Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, I should say. Yeah, I don't. You know, we he checked. He spent some time on that survey to make sure that there was nothing. Yeah. You know, he went back 50 years, yeah. and there's nothing saying that you know the village or anybody give him that land. Right. Um, there's a discrepancy on. The last survey that was done by I think it was Spicer Group, the the markers they put in the ground and describe are not where they're supposed to be off the measurements of that. So that tells me tells them somebody moved them. But oh, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I know it wasn't you, I, but there might have been a six pack of <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I, I really I have never I've bought so homes before and I've never ever and this is not a flipper home for us. My son's living here. But um, like I said, I, a lot of this is new to me. I, I'd much rather not. Did we bought the shed? Did we even decide if we would, if that was a option? Did we ever decide, yeah, we were interested in the shed of the property? I don't know if we I, I mean, I talked to Dave. We talked about uh, it. They, you know, they have stuff to store there. Uh, is it, you know? I mean, I would think that would be the easiest resolution is just buy the shed from you. And then, you know, you'd have to divide that property. would have to be, you know, village and township. The fence would have to move from our tent now to the, to the surveys that you and then And then the person, and then he'd have to go back on that realtor and say, no, no, no. He ain't going to be able to. Well, they sold him property that wasn't his. So. Well, they sold him a shed that was on somebody else's property. His his deed is only 0.4 acres, so legally he only bought 0.4 acres. Oh, he only bought the right amount of property then. Yeah, that shed but, wasn't even on there. But oh, he keyed that shed and gave me a key for it. Correct. Well, that's his responsibility. Yeah, yeah, you're that's right. exactly Absolutely. right. Well, I thought you were saying the real estate wasn't responsible. I'm like, somebody's responsible. <laughs> no, but yeah, you're <laughs> right. No, he should have known what he was selling. But I'm yes, saying yes. you're not going to be able to, because his buyer would be aware. My aunt was sold real estate for years, and I was asking her if you had any recourse against him. Uh, not against the title insurance. But There's no title. The title insurance wouldn't cover that from what I was told. No, because anything that can be resolved by and a, a state survey will, will not be covered by that. But he is responsible. In fact, the person that tried to buy the shed off me came through Rose Cooper, and uh, she's a real estate agent from around here. And today, we had to evict someone out of our Harvard Beach house that I bought. And she was up there today looking at it to list it for sale. And she told me she contacted my real estate agent because her buyer was really gung ho about getting the shed, so I tried to buy it off of me. And she looked on Get GIS, whatever that is, and it shows that it's on Bill's property. She told him that. And she said, and he said, Well, I've been told by the village or by the county that it's not. And that's where the fence line is. So he knew in advance. So he, that's a whole new issue for me to go there with. But tonight was a meeting, I just found this out. I contacted the attorney that they hired for me to let him know that he's going to have to resolve this. I'm, I should possibly probably get my own attorney because being that he's getting paid by the guy that I'm going to be suing, I'm not going to go over well. So, but this just came to light to me today. She knew 
enough to in Chicago. I mean, he he said that it, he was told that's where it was at. Seemed to me the easiest resolution of all of it is for him to buy the village property and for you to make the real estate company liable for covering that cost as an agreement to not sue them and then turn around and can we make a variance to where they can just have a shed on that village property? Is yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to create, you have one problem and you create another one by allowing, selling, you know, having a little lot like that and he just now, let's say he sells it and somebody moves in there and there's five cars there and Matt's there twice a week because we're, or we're, it's the new marijuana girl place, you know. It's, it's so so I guess we for that reason. <laughs> Now, would, it, would it be a so I don't someone want to buy another problem? I'd like to solve the problem. Is somebody wanting to buy the shed to put a business in there, or are they want to buy it to store it? Sure, to me who wants to buy the shed because then I could just go and sell it to myself. I don't know who it is. You know. Then could we make a stipulation as to what its use could be? Didn't well, you just make it one parcel number, and then okay. he has. That would be how the township would handle it. You know, if we sell it to him, it's, if we sell it to him, it's got to go either to the township or to us, one way or the other. I mean, that I found that shed hasn't been taxed all these years. There's no taxes. Oh, I'm going to tax rebate. I'm losing everything. So somebody's got to pay that tax. That's, that's Angie called me the other day about it. She's like, I need to get that on the tax roll. So it's amazing that that's it slipped through a lot of things. But it's supposed to go on to the to the township. Tax roll? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's supposed to be in the time of the village, right? Right. 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 So, so yeah, no matter which way it goes, there's no way to subdivide that in order to sell it off is what it's owning like, is what it's right. running down to. Well, my original intentions were never to buy it just to sell the shed. It, when someone approached me, it was a, you know, I thought, well, if I could sell it and lower my son's payment because he just graduated school and he works at Dow now, he's got to work his way up. But yeah. since that can't happen, the next step is basically at that point in time, either which way would you go? Do you want to go into the township or do you want to go into the village with the full property? That would be a decision you have to make. Um, to me, the simplest resolution, like I said, would be just simply you buy the village lot. I'm sure it's not an egregious well, amount to begin I mean, with. I would or, like to see, all right, if, if he buys that lot that that's on and he annex, you have to ask the township to leave the township. I can't, we can't do it for you. Right. But we could come up with an agreement that you buy that, you annex into the village, so now this property tax comes to us to kind of offset the cost of this. and. We agree on a, you know, maybe we get the, we get that lot appraised, so it's a fair. It's not just, you know, right. I, I want to be fair about it. Right. But from what my, what Ferris is telling me, the law is 99.9% .9 on our side. Right. So if we go to court, the odds are we can get it for what we pay him to do it. I don't want to do that. Oh, I, I, I don't know, and it, I'll be honest with you, I don't mean to sound crass. Do it. I, I'm going to get money from somebody. You know, I, 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 I know I put $62,000 on the table and bought it, and, and I know I have record of it. I'm getting money from somebody. And if that's the case, that just strengthens in my case there. I just want a resolution. And if that's, if you guys can get it for free, get it. I mean, yeah, I don't, just leave I my don't, boat alone. I don't want to do Don't come to get my boat because then we have an issue. I, I, I don't want to go there. Right, right. I, I, I want to protect the village and I want to do the right thing by following what the law is, too. From what, from, from what you know, I know, I don't know, I've never had to hire an attorney for $200 an hour, but I don't know the fairs charges you guys have, but when the attorney told me they sent me a cease and desist order, and his language, I should probably not use it here, he said he told them to fuck off. <laughs> and, and he said, we'll drag this through court for years if we have to. It's been here forever, and it's, and it's like okay. And he's like, if they want to, if they want to play that way, we'll, we'll drag it. And I'm like, you can drag the court for years. I don't want to do that. He's going to get paid by the real estate agent. Ferris is going to get paid by you guys. Yep. And it's not going to benefit me at all. They'll both make money. Yeah. And so, that, well, and Ferris said that attorney had sent him a letter. Charles gave you with his. Who okay. Is. Yeah. He sent him the old law. Right. And Ferris turned around and sent him the new law, right. and he called him, and he said, well, he kind of agreed with that. Right. So, 
Right. That's when Ferris sent the letter. Right. And he yeah. called me and told me that Ferris found a case where you couldn't do adverse possession on government property. Yeah, the law was updated. Right. And he didn't. He right. Didn't, and, and that's and that's fine. I don't. I don't. Like I said, if something has to happen, whatever it is going to be, it has to be. So and then I'll I'll react from there. You know. So you already said you were going to sue the real estate agent to get more money to make up for the building that you didn't legally buy because it was on our property. Sue who? The real estate agent. Well, as of today, Someone. if I found out that he knew that that building wasn't on my property and sold it to me anyways, now I have an issue. You know, I just found that out today from Right. Cooper. So what I'm saying is if you're going to go get money off him and then try to sell us that shed for 20 grand, essentially, I mean, I really don't care. I hope you profit on the deal. Right. What do you, if we want to buy that shed, what do you feel is a fair price? I mean, what, you could have it appraised, correct? I mean, have, let's have it appraised. That's the only We can, price. but you're probably not going to like the appraisal price because I know what my buddy's 40 by 40 shed just appraised for that he put up. How much did it appraise for? Not, about not even half what he has into it. Well, if this one was half of what it would cost a bill, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, but we're not going to go pay no. 20 grand for it. I know oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, the, Rose Cooper approached me with the buyer, and he offered me 20. I wanted 30. I told him no to 20. So. Yeah, but you can't. No matter how you slice it, you won't be able to sell it. At that time, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know. But I mean, yeah. right now, <laughs> the reality of it right now currently right. is you cannot sell it. You won't get anything by selling it. We're not going to buy it. Um, Literally, it's he, not going to happen. Could he sell it and they move it off the no, property? No, because it's no. technically You can move it off property. Of, the property is ours. He can sell the shed, whatever. I, we're not getting into that. Right now I'm talking about the shed, selling it on that parcel. Can't happen, won't happen. Even if you buy the property from the village, you still cannot subdivide and sell that shed. So selling the shed doesn't matter. Off the table. Um, Unless basically the resolution... You. Huh? Unless I'm selling it to you guys. We're not paying that. <laughs> my, no, my question is, can they have it like moved because people move buildings? 20 grand. If, they, if he sold the shed and had the, the building moved he, he off the property? You can't sell the shed because it's on our property. Okay, that's what I'm... Regardless. Sorry. Just asking. Didn't no, I'm sorry. I'm trying to ask you what I'm saying. He can't. It's physically can't. on our property. Can't. You can't, can't do that. Until we figure everything out. Yeah. Oh. Wow. That's what I said. The simplest so resolution. How long has this issue been going on? Three months, probably. I think I was in November. So. Simplest resolution at this point in time, I see it. The way I see it at this point in time is whatever that village property, that parcel appraises for, you approach your real estate company in an agreement to not sue them, they will pay for that for you. Mm -hmm. You get that. You annex all of it into the village at that point in time, everything's done, clean, you have your shed, you have your house, you have one big parcel. It's the easiest, simple, cheapest way because all of it's going to go a very long, dirty road. You're going to be out money. In the end, you it, it'll I'm continue to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a for free right now. Right. <laughs> You guys would pay for an attorney. But when you go after the real estate company, you have to pay for an attorney. What if I don't go after the real estate company? But I'm telling you, if you want that parcel at this point in time, the simplest way is I won't sue you if you pay for it. So if I sue my real estate agent, I have to hire an attorney right now. You take money on my You property. may not have to. If you approach them and tell them if you want to avoid a lawsuit. I will call them tomorrow. I'm, I'd call them to you. And you work. wouldn't have to have an attorney at that point right. because... Right. You're making it's a simple a agreement. You take the then the property. Everything ends. You okay. get the whole thing. I, I, annex I, into I, the I village. I give you my word that I'm going to call Garski Hewitt tomorrow and tell them this. I found out that they should have known that that was on Bill's property, and I'm not comfortable with that. And he's responsible, and I want to sue them. And and if he still stays my attorney, if he's still going to pay for me to sue him then that would be great. Otherwise, I'm not hiring an attorney because my goal was not to split the land up and make this huge profit on the shed. I paid $62,000 for a house that I probably would have paid 35, maybe 30, maybe 40 without the shed. So I'm not in this for, for gain. 
but I'm certainly not in for a loss. If, if I will approach him with that tomorrow. But his solution to Mr. Ferris finding that letter was, we'll fight this thing, we'll drag it through court, and that's not what I wanted to do. That's why I came here tonight. But, you know, I'm not, this is the attorney they afforded me. So, you know, if that's, if that's the road they want to take, it's not going to cost me any money. I mean, I'm already out of shed or the land below it. My kids still got the house. You know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, I guess. And currently, you're in violation of your cease and desist, and you willfully and wantingly <laughs> have admitted to that in a I never session. received a cease and desist. But you said you had, and He you said were. he got one and told Ferris to pack in his ass. I didn't get a cease and desist. <laughs> Until I get one, so then I'm not going to So do you need, I guess, do you need a, a price on what that lot would be? Okay, give me a price on it and I'll let them know. Is, is everybody open to here to possibly selling that lot? Or do you want me to go back to Ferris and say, no, we, we, we'll make an offer to Ferris tonight. We can come up with an offer on that shed if you like. And I could tell Mr. Ferris to communicate back with that lawyer that's been communicating with him, and we go from there. It's kind of the two options we got here. Personally, I'd just like to see the lot sold and have the whole parcel annexed into the village and be done with it. I would agree with I mean, and to, just to add, Ferris said to go take this to court. I mean, he's the, the law says it don't matter. You cannot do it against any government municipality. You can't take their land. He can't do it. So the law is, not, he said he wouldn't bet his life on it, but he's 99.9% .9 sure. But with that being said, you know, he said you could spend up to five grand fighting it. Now to me, I don't really want to fight over anything like that. If, if we can get him to agree or, or if he makes his real estate people pay for it, I, that whoever, I just want to make it so it's right in the end. And stay within the law. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta stay One way the or the other. Yep. And I think it's the simplest, cleanest way without mm -hmm. having to deal with a whole bunch of crap over the so next So I could say, months. you know, to an appraisal company, say appraise that lot as if there was nothing ever on it. That costs Correct. 260 bucks? Yeah. You appraised roughly? That's, I mean, I'm 500 into, I'm 500 into yep. a survey it and I'm into attorney fees with Mr. Ferris. I mean, I don't have a lot. I mean, I ain't been maybe two hours total. Okay. But so I mean, I mean, I think that would be fair. Then you know where you stand. Then he knows where he would stand. You know? I, th I think you're right. I think if we if we get the lot appraised, mm -hmm. we, we, everybody knows where we stand. And that and that. And then it, we can make a conscious decision mm -hmm. according to the law and go from there. Because a real estate agency may very well. It depends what the price is, and if it's. They're going to look at that and say, you know what, if we can give him X amount of money and cut this now and cut our losses, it, it's probably going to be in the best interest. But I mean, it, if, if, that, if that goes, that's the only stipulation is it has to be one parcel. I mean, we're not going to allow... Right, but the property the now that my son paid tax, I like said a tax check for $591, that went to Bingham, that's the, you know, the township. The township. Sure. So then it would be village. It would it, You'd have to pay a village and it would the taxes them. be higher or lower than that. They're going to go up. Because <laughs> you have a separate you parcel have, that got included pay, that wasn't there before. When you come into the building, you have to pay village taxes and township taxes. Because your, your acreage is going to grow. You're at 0.4, so you're going to add that square footage. So you're going to go, you're right. going to be over 0.5. Right. So right. your taxes will go up because of that. But Do you know how big that area is from the fence? to? It's uh, 60 by... 120, I think. That's from the fence for the markers. Yeah, that's the the, the area of the villages. Uh, the, 60 by 120. Yeah, okay. I think that's. Okay, well, if, you, if that's what you're going to do, Mr. Nickel, I appreciate your time. You'll get me you a know, price and I'll run it by well, the Well, I'll, so we'll pay for the appraisal. And so that's, that's a public record. So, like, the survey, I think Ferris was going to send that to them because it's a public money was spent on it so he said give it to me and I'll send it on to them so you have the right to see that I don't know if they showed it to you or not
Show sure about the the survey that we paid for. Oh no, I just saw the stakes in my kids. Oh okay. Yeah, that's all. yeah, I mean we have the paperwork on right. it too. Oh yeah, that's fine. I, I I'm certain that they're accurate. You know. I, yeah, I they <coughs> they usually pretty <coughs> good. Right. So I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing that the shed is on. Well, we'll let's we'll go that route. I mean we were prepared okay. that we were going to do a closed session on to come up with a. Yeah. An amount to offer you, right? Well, not technically you because we're negotiating with somebody else, I guess, right? But we'll we'll hold off on that then, right? We'll come up with a if you're willing to go that route, and we'll go from there, then. right? Right, right. That's that, right. That's that, right. That, that way, it's a fair. I didn't set the price, he didn't set the price, it was done by all right. I mean, I guess to me, that's the fair way to do it. I'm praise long, I'm down with it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I agree. When when you guys have the the lot survey, <coughs> survey as without shed on appraise appraise oh, yeah. I'm sorry appraise yeah. with no no yeah well appraise right. well, yeah. well would no. you would you uh, when they're appraising it they won't appraise the shed no okay they're appraising the lot only if you want them to include the shed price yeah, and pay that pay. full price yeah. no no I'm thinking I'm because he was that. saying no, I'm not talking if you were going to purchase okay. shed one time. He said that it would be surveyed, but I wouldn't like the price. But if they're there, why not? Have the the appraisal on it. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're. I mean, I don't think we're prepared to even pay an appraisal price on it because no, I, I'm a. I no, I wouldn't even agree to a buying it. I would honestly. take my chances with what Ferris tells me yeah. before I okay. do that. But, okay. But I'd rather see this way, the other way out. That way, it's a little more harmonious through the word yeah. the word you want to use. Right. I think it's you know the easiest, I mean? simplest. I personally would like to see that house in the village because it goes around it and then clean it up and so let's do that we'll appraise it we'll get with you let you know what it appraises for and then the next meeting maybe we can okay all right all right or maybe before then or something well I can't do nothing without these guys no. okay. on it, okay. unfortunately so all right well, I don't, well, know the direction, I don't so. want to call special meetings <coughs> So that's that's what we'll do going forward. Then. All right. All right. Do we need a motion? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll do that. So I entertain a motion to appraise the property that is currently at. I had the address. You had the address. I had it. Forty-seven seventy South Ugly Road. Yeah, forty-four seventy South Ugly Road. Appraise a lot that, and I think we're gonna call it sixty. Two by 120. I will double check that, but that'll give two feet on the side of the fence, so that follows the zoning a little bit. And like Jeff said, the shed. So I think I'll double check that, but I, that should work. So I'll start over. I'll entertain a motion to have authorize President Jason Nickel to contact an appraisal agency to appraise a lot at 4470 South Ugly Road. 62 by 120. Don't make that motion. <laughs> exactly how you read it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will second that. Oh, okay. I said 44. It's 40, 40. What did he say? 40, Is it 4470? No, 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. Well, that's what I have there. That's why I'm questioning whether or not it's like... Oh, it is 4770. Okay. At 4770 South Ugly Road. Sorry. Go ahead. So it's motion by you, right? By Gabe. Second by Jennifer. Or Sarah. Gabe, Sarah. To prove hiring a... Appraisal agency to appraise yeah. that lot. Okay. Any discussion? Nope. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thanks. I wish we nope. no. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're trying. Yeah. Sorry, take what's going on. Oh yeah, that's all right. Wasn't your mess. Wasn't our mess, but I guess we all got it. I don't know what together. Yeah, it did say both of them. Oh, the last.
All right, we'll go to new business. I need a. Uh, one thing I forgot to do yeah, was the president so. pro tem. <laughs> I know you are just jumping up to do it. What are you doing? <coughs> president pro tem. I was really thinking between Brandon and Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was making recommendations. <laughs> Unfortunately, those nasty student loans, like, they haunt you. So I had, you know, you're going to buy a house, you're going to buy a three-bedroom, two-bath with a full car, or with a garage and a basement and a fenced-in yard and a pool. Maybe even a dog, right? And you got a dollar amount on that house. Well, when you find the house that has everything but the dog, but it has the right price, you buy it. Well, I kind of got offered the job that had all the boxes checked at the right price, and I took it. So I'm changing jobs. So this is what it happens to me at this point. So we, this is in Boyne City where we're moving. So for all you snow dealers, we'll be jealous. But um, we're not leaving right away. We're, we're moving in. It's a step process because I've got to, I'm going to go up there work during the week. We're going to volley back and forth. I'm just going to finish school year here. And then it all depends on when Tim finds a job up in that area. You know, the whole thing takes time. So we're not leaving ugly. My address isn't changing, but I'm not going to be here during the week. Okay. Now, I want, I, I just, I don't want to leave you hanging with this budget thing, so I got a couple of possible solutions because I don't want to leave you short for some. Okay. I have a flexible day on Friday, so like I can be back in ugly at, like at 7 o'clock or 7.30 on a Friday. Okay. So if you, if you are willing to move an appointment, you know, the meeting time on those months to a Friday or Sunday afternoon or whatever, I can be in only those days and we can do a meeting. Okay. Um, that solution, that's one possibility. I know that's an inconvenience because it changes the day, but it's just one thought I had thought. And the other one was, I don't know if you can do, you probably can't, um, if you can do video conferencing. No, not yet. Can't uh, do that. Okay. Because I was going to say that would be a great solution. Because then you wouldn't have to change the day and I could still be here on you know, webinar well, webinar. now I have seen it, you know, talked about in the clerks, you know, thing. and you can do it, but you have no vote or no say in right. the meeting. Because so, you're, you're not physically here. And that really doesn't help you. Right. So, and you need to have an excellent number of people to get this budget done. <clears throat> so I don't want to leave you without a body to get, because you got to, don't you have to have at least this many? Four. 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 Okay. We have five. 
So, you know, that is something you guys got to decide if that's something you want to entertain. <coughs> so, when when you start this next week or uh, two weeks, yeah. Okay, two weeks. So you're you're thinking like the February meeting. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. Right, right? unless we okay. did it on a Friday or something, which then I could be back for it. I mean, I could okay. come home. So, like I said, on Fridays I can get out of there early, and then it's a four-hour run back here, but I can do it. And now, and last of least, I mean. If the third option, which Tim is like, yeah, I work overtime and stuff. I don't know how well that's going to work, John. You know, in the spring, because there's a call. Yeah. But he said if, you, if they took you off, I could go on for you until they found somebody else, too. But there again, you know, that's okay until it gets to be fertilizer season and he's in the truck. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I have the same problem, too, in the summer. But um, I don't know. That's a... I know, I'm sorry, I feel the same, but I didn't know, I mean, I literally just got out No, of that's job. fine. I feel no, so bad, I, I, but... No, you're all right. You, you don't know when that's going to happen ahead of time, and no. who knows, I've been looking for a long time, I didn't think I saw anything come in the horizon. Try to soften the blow. <laughs> 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 I feel bad, I do, I really feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's hard to move the meeting because we post them and, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. you know, that's hard to do. I won't be here for next meeting. Yeah. So we know the four people. No. Well, I, I have somebody to talk to about that because she didn't, you didn't get any, so. God, you, you're coming to the meeting, Jim. You might as well sit there. Yeah. <laughs> well, he would be I good, sat there for 12 years. He'd be a good okay. person for that. Though. What's up? I was here. Step up to the That's what I was thinking. Steve yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's here a lot. <laughs> I got too much other stuff. He comes back with an announcement about pancake breakfast. And we don't. <laughs> so I guess that's something that I don't know if you want. I mean, you're going to want to probably know something. And if you just, if you just, Feel like if it's just better I resign, then I resign because I can't. I know I can't be here because I will not as be bad here. As, as much as that would really suck, but it, fully understanding you have your family. You yeah, have your I mean I don't want you to drive them. Yeah, to uh, do. Well, I gotta come home anyway. I mean, my yeah. husband still does want me to but come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't want you. You've, you've been gone all husband, week. If so. I was gone all week and then I didn't come home, I'd be in big trouble. Okay. <laughs> so. I know how that is, you know. I don't want you to have to come home and say, well, I gotta go do this and that. So, well, he understands I mean, that, but that's yeah. up to you guys. If I mean, I can just write you a letter and give it to you for next time if that's what you want to do. But, you and what do you think? I mean, I don't, I don't want to force her into doing it. I don't want to force you to have to do anything, but it sounds like your decisions are already. Your well, I'm taking it because yeah. it's like way. You've already made your It's mind, almost so. double the money. Yeah. Yep. I mean, really, just, I can't, nobody can compete with it. Get yeah, skiing so. lessons. Yeah, and, and he's already got a snow uh, uh, outdoor storage unit funded for his snowmobiles. Well, and if, it, if it were me, I would, I would. Yeah, I, I would. Okay. You're putting more on your my plate with this. Decision, I would, I would do that. Yep. And to me, your head isn't going to be into the budget anyway because. You have the new job, you have the travel, you have your family, you have everything else. You're you will be able to yeah. 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 As we're focus on your job and your family. You, that, oh. And it sucks. <laughs> but I know. We'll, we'll get through her. I know. But if you I got I, through a lot worse. If I see you on the street, I will snub yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or maybe Walmart. <laughs> That's where I always see you as Walmart. Yeah, I'll turn the other way. Okay. Is he going to get his uh, yeah. nameplate that <laughs> just for down now? I don't know. I'm pulling it. I'm thinking he might scratch it in with his fingernails. <laughs> I know what I'm changing her for a street to, though. <laughs> Traffic control order. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> well, That's I guess <laughs> we'll move on to public comment. Anybody have any public comment? Yeah, he does. Yeah, I got a couple of them. The other day, First thing, I was, I guess I'm not sure if it's still went up under public comment on agenda or not, but the homecoming dates I'd like to request uh, July 12th through the 15th. Of 2019 for the homecoming. Um, I got the contract from TTPA, and that's the dates they gave us for that weekend there. 
So as soon as I always try to get up here as quick as I get that contract to, to get everything worked out. So um, I don't know if you guys can probably have to vote on that under the next meeting or something. Yeah, well, that's fine. Um, uh, the other thing, my wife wanted me to come up here. She couldn't make it up here tonight. Um, she wrote up a, a couple things. Uh, the community club, along with the Elderly Christian Church, would like to say thanks to the village for allowing us through the caroling and the tree lighting this year. Had a huge turnout. I look forward to always for ways we can improve it for this for next year. Um, I don't know if anybody was around to see that. There was they had a lot of people up there. They had that trailer right full of people and are walking and it was it was a good turnout for, for what they did. Well, they came nice. to the library afterwards and counted was, over seventy people. Uh, wow. Nice. So it was, that was a it was a good a good turnout for the first year doing it. Um, the other thing is that uh, up there, the community club is sponsoring a vintage snowmobile show and chili and soup cook-off along with auctioning off the chainsaw art that we had at the homecoming. Um, this will be held February 9th and there will be a flyer she's going to get together and get to the board so they can see it <laughs> if they want to publish it with a newsletter or something. Well, um, because I don't have a newsletter <laughs> for this, up there wasn't really anything to put in it that I could think of that was upcoming. Anyway. Um, the flyer on that um, chili cook-off and the snowmobile thing or whatever, I thought, you know, we could put that in with our um, water bills. This way everybody gets it, and maybe we can help promote it, you know, in that for the village, or for the clubs. Good idea. Don't put one in Brandon's, he won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, same thing. We have a breakfast Sunday, so if you're hungry, come on. Okay. Anybody else? About the breakfast, Steve. Hmm? I mentioned it. Yeah. Just so this Sunday. Yeah. What's the hours? Uh, no, eight to noon. Eight to noon. Okay. Yep. We did have. So just to give you a rough idea, last month we had a breakfast with Santa. We had 70 kids that came in, 10 under 8 for free. Nice. Um, and we had over, we had close to 300 people that came to the front door. Cool. Um, so that, that goes over really good and it's a good thing. We all the kids got their present or picture taken. So. Okay. And our handicap accessibility renovations are, are still moving forward with our chairlift and stuff. And then, um, I'll have to talk to you after the meeting. Okay. <coughs> to, uh, to add to that, Steve, uh, TVO is going to be doing a uh, Hoops Mania for March Madness on the NCAA basketball tournament. It's a fundraiser, $5 a ticket. You get so many teams, and then you add up their points, and, and it's based off that. But they'll be selling those yep. at the first. At the breakfast. It'll be the yeah. first time they're available. Yep. They're going to start selling those up through March. They're $5 tickets, a great way to donate to them. Uh, Ray Mauer and I are running the uh, are running the fundraiser yep. for them. So you know, get out, get five bucks out of your pocket, and uh, mm -hmm. and they'll even, we'll even sell you uh, four for twenty. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm three for twenty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I guess I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. I'll see you.